Right, guys today i'm going to show you a technique that will help you get a very clean punchy sound when kind of doing skank rhythm funk guitar parts that is those single note kind of percussive parts now just a little bit of a warning here this technique does hurt a bit because what we're doing is making contact with the strings with our index finger more than the pick okay so you can probably see that in the tip of my index finger there's getting a little bit raw but anyways for me there's no better way to get a clean punchy tone on these funk skank rhythm parts make sure you come by tastyguitar.com get the free tab for this lesson by subscribing on the bottom of the homepage and check out membership in the description below. Tune up and let's get started. All right, guys, so first I'm going to break down kind of the difference between a normal kind of skank strum and what I'm doing here with my right hand. Now, typically, you're probably coming from straight above, hitting pretty much all the strings and muting everything except for the string that you want to hear. So say if I'm hitting the D note at the seventh fret there on the G string, you're probably doing this coming directly above and hitting almost every string and uh, just muting everything else except the G string. Now, typically, that is the technique that most people use, and it's just fine. But I do see a couple drawbacks to that. First, you've got to be very good with your muting. If you're coming straight up from above here, you've got to make sure that everything is muted beyond the string that you want to sound the note on. Okay, so you've got to really bring the thumb over the top and also have your index finger muting very strongly as well. Another possible disadvantage to this technique is you're getting just as much dead string noise as you are the actual note which you're aiming for. So let me show you the difference in what I'm doing. So what you're going to do here is start in your normal position. Bring your wrist outward probably about an inch to an inch and a half. Angle your forearm up towards the ceiling, just like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to strike the string, making contact with the string actually first with the tip of your index finger. Now if you want to see exactly where I'm making contact there, take a look at that. You'll see that kind of callus there, and that's where I'm making contact. So by doing this, I'm going to get a very punchy sound and I get a little bit of the brightness uh, with the pick behind it. Now so listen to the difference if I come from above, I get all that dead string noise which is fine in some situations. It's also tougher to mute though. Here I'm aiming directly for that G string and I get that very punchy sound. You can tell if you're doing it right if you just go ahead and drop your pick and go ahead and do it with your finger and it still has that really punchy tone. All right, so what I suggest you do in practicing this technique is just take any scale. Let's say take the E minor pentatonic scale here and I'm just going to run up that scale being really focused on one note at a time and get that punchy sound by making contact with your index finger again. Now I'll break down that rhythm that I played on the intro for you so you can apply this technique right away. Again. All right, started with a very typical double stop bend, kind of almost a quarter step bend there at the eighth fret. Now on the next beat, dead strings, followed with the D note at the seventh fret on the G string. To the E, to the E an octave below at the seventh fret on the A string. We're then going to follow that up with a slide from the fifth to the sixth fret on the D string. Then to an E6 chord with a barred third finger across the top three strings, ending on the top of an E9 chord with the index finger. So the first measure. Again. Now just to remind you the difference of the sound between the typical technique of kind of strumming all the strings dead and this technique, here's the typical sound. Right? 
Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but this is just different. Moving into the second measure, let me play through this slowly. Starting with that D note. Upstroke on the B note there at the ninth fret on the D string. Back to the D note, to the E at the ninth fret on the G, down to the E at the seventh fret on the A. Then finishing off by hammering from the D to the E on the A string, and then the open E. So now let's put the entire rhythm together. Mm -hmm. 